Hello, everyone. I just want to make a brief uh, overview of uh, week three of our course, which focuses on Bookner and Fisher's Why is Death Bad? Well, this is the last uh, reading in the first part of the course, uh, which is titled Epicureanism and its Puzzles. And I think that it is a good example of this as we read through these three things of uh, things that really do build on each other. Once, once we've really grasped what Epicurus is getting at, then we are in a position to read Nagel and to judge what Nagel is up to. And once we do that, we are in a position to, uh, a better position at least, to judge what these authors here are up to. Um, Nagel, although he doesn't mention Epicurus, certainly is, is, is responding to Epicurus and these authors are definitely uh, explicitly responding to Nagel. The central idea in Why is Death Bad is the asymmetry problem. I have given you in the week's videos, just uh, dedicated, well, I, know, I know there's one dedicated video that's just about the asymmetry problem. So you simply have to understand what that is. The, the whole point here of this essay is to provide a certain solution to the asymmetry problem. Uh, and it's a rather winding road uh, to get there uh, to see what their solution is, but it is actually presented explicitly, and I would say fairly clearly at the end when they, section two, why death is bad. Um, and uh, although they ultimately reject uh, Derek Parfit's uh, solution or his example, his hypothetical, his first one, um, as a solution to the asymmetry problem for various reasons, actually for one specific reason, as you'll see, uh, they're very, very much indebted to Parfit. And, and the, to, to really get their solution, you have to get Parfit's thinking and Parfit's thinking, the big idea in Parfit's thinking is that uh, goods and bads or pleasures and pains have a big uh, difference in value for us according to whether they're in the past uh, or the future. At least some of them do. Um, so that, generally speaking, we want our bads to be in the past, and we want our goods to be in the future. And this really is an important idea and definitely is an element to their own solution to why they think uh, the asymmetry problem can be solved or why they think basically Epicurus and Lucretius were wrong about <clears throat> the uh, equivalence of prenatal and posthumous non-existence. Basically, I would say, relying on the intuitive rightness of the idea that we want our pleasures and goods to be in the future, so we care more when they are taken away. Then we care about past deprivations of pleasures because they're in the past. Uh, so it is a, you know, it's a very interesting uh, discussion, especially because it brings up this idea of the temporal location of a bad uh, and how it affects our notion of how much it means to us.